so in properties of triangles the last concept that we stopped at was your uh, cyclic quadrilateral correct if i am not mistaken so properties of triangles continued so we stopped at cyclic quadrilateral okay so in cyclic quadrilateral i think we had discussed about the cosine rule okay so in today's session i am going to start with one of the very interesting theorems which is applied to cyclic quadrilateral is ptolemy's theorem is ptolemy's theorem now those who have done geometry of prmo rmo level in your class 10 would have definitely come across this theorem ptolemy's theorem so what is this ptolemy's theorem let's discuss about it and we will also prove this okay so we'll not only uh, discuss we'll not only write the theorem but we'll also prove it so let's talk about ptolemy's theorem so let's say this is a cyclic quadrilateral okay this is a cyclic quadrilateral let me just make the diagram okay so any cyclic quadrilateral a b c d will satisfy the fact that the product of its diagonals so ac into bd ac into bd will be equal to sum of the product of the opposite sides so ab and opposite side to it is cd plus bc opposite side to it is ad okay so what does it say it says that the sum of uh, the product of the diagonals is equal to the sum of the product of the opposite sides okay so ac into bd is ab into cd plus bc into ad so this is applied to a cyclic quadrilateral so this particular formula it works for a it works for a cyclic quadrilateral let me write it down here cyclic quadrilateral now a natural question will arise in your mind what if the quadrilateral is not cyclic then what will happen to this theorem okay so a small change will happen if the if the quadrilateral is not cyclic then ac into bd will be lesser than in fact lesser than the sum of the product of the opposite sides okay so this will hold true if the quadrilateral is a non cyclic one non cyclic quadrilateral okay is it fine any questions now for a non cyclic quadrilateral we are not going to talk about it but it is good to know that for a non cyclic quadrilateral the product of the diagonals is actually lesser than the sum of the product of the opposite side so we are only going to focus on this guy so this fellow we are going to prove now okay so let's prove this fellow as of now okay. now for proving this <coughs> for proving this let me recall my cosine law in fact let's let's talk about okay so when we talked about the cosine law in the last session okay what was your cos of b uh, let me name it also so let's say this is your a square up oh, not a a b c and d right so if you apply your cosine law i mean the normal cosine law for the triangle okay let's say i call ac as x okay so in triangle abc if you apply cosine law so cosine law is nothing but a square plus b square minus x square by 2ab okay which means x square which is nothing but square of ac becomes a square plus b square minus 2ab cos b correct and now what i'm planning to do is i'm going to replace my cos b if you recall cos b formula we had learned was a square plus b square minus c square minus d square where a b c d are the sides of this quadrilateral upon 2 ab plus c d just turn the pages back i think this was the last thing that we had done in our previous session so what i did first i'll again reiterate it for the people who joined in little late so we are doing the proof for the ptolemy's theorem and what i did was first i called this ac length as x 
And for the triangle ABC, I wrote the cosine law, which is a square plus b square minus x square by 2ab that we have already seen in our triangles. From here, we got x square in terms of a square plus b square minus 2ab cos b. Now, this cos b we had already seen in our last class. For a cyclic quadrilateral, cos b is given by this expression. Okay. So, so far, we have only done so much. Now we are going to do a simplification of this. Okay. Don't worry. I'll, I'll prove it very, you know, in a very easy way. So I'm just doing a simplification of AC square. So let me take the LCM. So it will become, by the way, this two, this two, you can cancel off. So you have a square plus B square times a B plus CD minus a B times a square plus B square minus C square minus D square. Okay. So let's try to cancel off. Few terms I can clearly see will cancel off when I expand it. This AB times this and this AB times this, they will definitely cancel each other out. So I'm not writing all the unwanted stuff. I'm just writing the stuff which is required for us. So I will have A square CD. Okay. I will have A square CD. I will have B square CD. Correct. And from here I will get plus a B C square and plus a B D square. Am I right? Is there anything which I'm missing out? Please do let me know. Okay. All good so far. Any problems, any concerns so far in whatever I have done. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to club these two terms together. The ones which I have ticked marked with yellow, and I'm going to turn these two terms together, which I have ticked marked with white. So if I tick club these two, please note that I'll be taking AC common and I will end up getting AD plus BC. And from these two, I'm going to take BD common and I'm going to get AD plus BC. Okay. In short, this is going to get factorized. The numerator is going to get factorized as AC plus BD times AD plus BC. Okay. Now this is the expression for, this is the expression for AC square. Okay. Look at the figure. AC square. I'll, I'll just copy the figure once again so that, you know, we can see it clearly down also. So let me just copy this. Okay. So let me take this figure and copy over here. Yeah. So look at this figure. This is your AC square. Now I would like everybody. Okay. Shouldn't there be a two in the denominator, right? You cancel it before. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tejasini. Tejasini, you are the only person who, no, Prishim also pointed it out. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. I canceled that two, uh, two in the denominator. So that will not appear. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I would like you to tell me looking at the same expression, had I done the same thing for BD, that means if I wanted to you to tell me what is BD square, can you take a clue from this and tell me what would be BD square? This is your BD, let's say, and I want you to tell me what is BD square. Take a clue. See, we have AC plus BD. Okay. Let's say while we're finding out this, we had AC plus BD. That means we are basically taking, uh, <clears throat> I mean, how would you like to read this product of the opposite side? So that will equally be applicable to BD square also. So we'll have AC plus BD there. Okay. Now see the second term AD plus BC, A D plus BC. Now, what are you doing here? You are basically taking the two sides, which are on either side of that particular uh, diagonal and you're multiplying them and adding them. So AD BC. So if I have to do the same for B, BD square, I will do how AD plus CD. Am I right? Correct. AB plus CD. So that will, be, that is what is going to come. Yes or no? Again, I'll tell you, see, you had AD plus BC, right? So let's say focus on AC diagonal. 
A and D are are the two opposite sides of that particular diagonal, and B and C are also two opposite sides. So here, while you wrote this expression, you can perceive this as if you multiplied this and this, and you multiplied this and this and added them, right? In the by the same logic. See, I don't want to derive B D square again, just like I did for A C. So I'm just trying to, you know, reach to that result in a faster way. So for B D, what I will do, I'll multiply this this, and I will multiply this this and add them. So that will give me A B plus C D. In a like manner, is it fine? Is it fine? Okay. And what happens to the denominator? What happens to the denominator? <coughs> Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, what will happen to the denominator? So, now see here. Earlier, it was A, B, C, D. That means you multiplied the two sides which are were on the same side of that particular angle, right? Right. So here you'll do A, D plus B, C, right? So you'll do A, D plus B, C. Absolutely right, Rajeshwini. Okay. Now let us multiply these two. Let us multiply these two. So from these two. If you multiply it, what are you going to get? You are going to get AC square into BD square. Let me write it down. Let me write it down. So AC square was AC plus BD times AD plus BC upon AB plus CD times. And this was in yellow. I'll keep writing it in yellow so that, yeah. This is going to be your right. The lot of terms is going to get cancelled off. This term gets cancelled off with this. This term gets cancelled off with this. Ultimately, you are left with. Ultimately, you are left with AC plus BD the whole square. Correct. Now, just remove the squares from everybody, so from both the sides. Okay, so both the sides remove the squares. So you'll see something like AC plus BD on the other side. Now, what is AC? Let's check the figure. A is your AB, and C is your CD. So this guy is nothing but AB into CD. And what is the small b? Let's check the figure again. Small b is BC. Okay, and this is your AD. Correct. This is what we wanted to prove. This is what we wanted to prove. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. 
so i think with this we have done a fair bit of our uh, you know properties of triangles part now we are going to start with solution of triangles okay so let's take solution of triangles part from here on which is again an important topic few questions have been asked based on the same in your competitive exams so this was your ptolemy's theorem and we are now going towards towards the next segment of our chapter which is going to be the last segment which is called sort solution of triangles okay now what is this meaning of this topic solution of triangles properties of triangles many of you make sense out of it so you learn some properties which are related to triangles so what is the solution of triangles many people call, ask me sir i don't i didn't understand the name of this chapter solution of triangles so solution is normally associated with you know solving equations right so we find solution of equations so uh, is there any equation that is involved so are we solving some kind of an equation actually you are not solving an equation but you are solving for a triangle now what is the meaning of solving for a triangle now let me explain this when you talk about any triangle okay let me just make one quickly a triangle has got six parameters what are the six parameters the three angles abc and the three sides small a small b small c so in all together a triangle has got six you can say parameters associated with it the three angles those are three parameters and the three sides those are also three parameters 3 plus 3 6 now it is said that in fact logically that if you know any of the three you will be able to find the remaining three okay except when all the three given to you are angles so if somebody gives you any three of the six parameters you can actually find the remaining three also other than those conditions where all the three are angles so if somebody gives you all angles okay let's say i give this is 30 degree this is let's say you know a uh, 70 degree and this is 80 degree can you find a triangle you say there there are so many triangles with that particular angle okay or with that particular set of angles so other than the three information being all angles if somebody gives you any three parameters let's say two sides one angle or one angle two sides or three sides you can definitely find the remaining three as well so finding the remaining three from the given three is basically called solving for a triangle clear is that clear what is the meaning of this chapter solution of triangles okay so i'll write it down so this chapter deals with finding finding triangles with three given parameters okay three given parameters except when except when the three given are all angles okay is basically called solution of triangles okay so this chapter deals with this concept okay plain and simple so let me see let let's let's see how many situations can be given to us and what all properties that we have already learned in our first part of the chapter is going to help us to find the unknowns which are there in the triangle okay so let us start with the condition when you have been given all three angles uh, sorry all three sides okay please note that all three angles if somebody gives you i you i wrote all three angles all three sides all three angles if somebody gives you there will be infinitely many triangle with those those angles okay so let me start with the first case where all three sides have been given to you so let's say in a triangle you have been provided i'll just make a triangle once again you have been provided with small a okay so let me write the ones which have been given to me in yellow okay and let's write down the ones which have not been given to me in white okay so small a small b small c are given to you how do you find capital a capital b capital c how do you find the angles of a triangle can can you tell me how to find it out anybody any suggestions which law which concept 
will you like to use here to get the unknowns anybody it's not a rocket science cosine law absolutely right tejasvini absolutely right so by using your cosine law you can find your all the angles isn't it so nothing to worry about it this is something which is already known to us see i am not teaching anything new here it's like solving for a triangle using the properties already known to us right so there is i mean of course you will be learning few new things but idea is you have to implement you have to apply the concepts that you have already learned in the first part of the chapter okay so using this you can find your a using this you can find your b okay and using this you can find your c angle c okay when i say c means angle c okay yes or no yes or no okay is it fine any questions any questions any concerns all right let's take the second case let's take the second case so from here i'll just write it down from here you can find your find your a b and c all right let's take the second case second case is where you have been given two angles two angles and any one side and any one side so as i told you three things must be given to you so in this case i am assuming that you have been provided with two angles two angles and one side so how do you find the remaining let me just make a dummy triangle over here okay a b c okay let's say the question setter has provided you with angle a okay i'm i'm writing i'm writing down whatever has been given okay and let's say he has given me one of the sides which side you want to take let's say this side okay small a how do you find out as i told you i would write the known things in yellow and unknown things in white so this is not known to us this is not known to us oh, by the way this is small c not small a small c okay and this is small b so how do you find how, how do you find small a small b and capital c when these three things are known to you any idea so you'll say sir for small c Uh, sorry for capital c you just have to do 180 degree minus a plus b there's nothing much to do about it yes or no correct so nothing to do for finding capital c right how would you find small a any idea how do you find small a okay shalini shardhuli okay so i think somebody is suggesting me sign law okay now let's say i use sign law now that you have found your c you can use c by sin c is equal to let's say i want to find small a right small a by sin a okay can i use this very much i can easily find it out by using this correct so small a can be obtained from here let me write it in white as i already told you this is our unknown so i'll write it in white yes or no can we now find out from the same expression small b as well correct so this is going to be b divided by sin b so b also can be found out so
सो बी विल बी सी साइन बी अपॉन साइन सी इजी करेक्ट यस नो सो साइन लॉ इज गोइंग टू हेल्प अस आउट नथिंग मोर टू डू है नाउ कमिंग टू द थर्ड केस एनी डाउट रिलेटेड टू द सेकेंड केस दीज ऑल केसेस आर वाइड वेरी इजी आई मीन the the trickier ones are going to come little while down the line so now we are let's say given two sides and an included angle and the included angle i should say because there will be only one included angle between two sides so let's say the question setter has given you two sides of a triangle and the included angle so again let me make a diagram okay so let's say let's say a b c is our triangle okay and the question setter has provided you with let's say uh, small b and small c and he has provided you with this angle a okay then how do you find out the other things again let me make this in yellow because it is already given to me yeah how do you find the other things like small a angle b angle c okay so here b c and a are given to you how would you find small a small b sorry small a capital b capital c what tactics will you use okay so shardali has a idea so she is saying that you can use you can use cosine law to get your small a okay so we know a so we know cos a cos a is b square plus c square minus a square by 2 bc so from here you find out your small a okay so this now will be known to you correct now small a is known to you then how would you find out capital b now here is a call that all of you you know please take it so if you know a you are going to do a by sin a because you know a you know small a now also because you have found out by using your cosine law now let's say you wanted to find angle b and you are going to do small b by sin b so the problem here that would arise is let's say you find out sin b by using this formula b sin a by capital a now let's say let's say if this comes out to be half let's say hypothetically would you take your b as 150 degree or will you take it as 30 degree right so there may be a confusion especially when your a is no a is not an angle big enough to rule out 150 degree okay so if let's say a is 60 degree then you can say automatically sir a is already 60 degree then b cannot be 150 because you don't want an angle of a triangle to become more than 180 right but let's say a was a deceiving angle and you ended up getting sin b as a half the problem with sin is it gives you the same value for two angles which are supplementary and both could be possibilities in a triangle so this might create a confusion i'm not saying always you like you know get into a problem so this might might be an issue this might create confusion okay so i normally refrain from using sin law in such case okay what i would do is see i have already found out all my three sides so why not use cosine law and cos b and cos c to get our remaining sides so cos b is what a square plus c square minus b square by 2ac and cos c is what a square plus b square minus c square by 2ab why not use this okay so better to use this and refrain from using this i mean because you know it may cause a confusion but it depends on case to case huh? i'm not generalizing it it's, it's not going to happen always there is actually one more way to get it and that is by the use of tangent law most of you would remember tangent law napier's analogy that also can help you to get the a uh, solve for the triangle so this is one way okay this is one way this is your second way to do it and third way is your use of 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 
tangent law. Now see here, b and c are given, so we can use the formula tan b minus c by two is b minus c by b plus c cot a by two. Correct. So please note the question setter has already provided you with small b, small c, and angle a. Right. So from here you can find b minus c. This can be found out. Correct. And since a is known to you, b plus c is also known to you. Right, because A is known to me, so from here can we not solve for B and C? Yes or no? We will take some questions. Don't worry. Later on, later on uh, during this session, I'll take some questions. So that is another way to get the you know unknowns from the triangle. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay, now the last case, which is the fourth case, that is very important. Okay, so we'll talk about that. But before I move on, if you have any questions, please get it addressed. Okay, all fine. So let's move on to the fourth case. Fourth case is where you have been provided with two sides, two sides, and a non-included angle, a non-included angle. Okay, this is called as the ambiguous case. Okay, it has been given a name as an ambiguous case, but don't get scared, sir. Ambiguous case means nothing is known. No, nothing like that. It's just a fancy name which has been given to it. So when you are given two sides and an angle which is not included between the two sides, so there will be two non-included angles, right? So any one of the two is given to you, then how do you find out the complete triangle? So let me just show the diagram here. So let's say the question setter, Ayo. The question setter has provided with a B, okay, and let's say a C. And a non-included angle, let's say this angle. Okay. Fine. So what is given to you? Small b, small c, and capital B, they are given to you. Okay. How do you find out the other unknowns in a triangle? That is what we are going to discuss under this ambiguous case. So listen to this very, very carefully. Yes, you may have multiple triangles satisfying the condition. So that's what we are trying to figure out. So why multiple triangles come out and what are, what are the possibilities that can come out? We are going to analyze it in a very great depth. So let us utilize our cosine law first of all. So when we apply cosine uh, of B, we end up getting something like A square plus C square minus B square by 2AC. Now please note that B, C are known, A is not known. So in short, if you see here, you basically give you a quadratic expression in A. A is an unknown, mind you. Up till now, we have not found out A. So this gives me a quadratic expression like this. Okay. So this becomes a quadratic in A. So when I say a quadratic in A, obviously we all know that a quadratic equation can have two roots. Okay. So let me write it down. Quadratic equation in small a. Right. So that means two values of A can come out. Correct. So from this situation, I mean, I, it is not necessary that all quadratics will give you, you know, uh, two, uh, two roots. Maybe a quadratic can have a single root also. It may have no roots at all also. Right. So please understand here, very, very important. If this quadratic equation, if this quadratic equation gives you two positive values of A, okay, then only you have two triangles possible. Okay. But if it gives you only one positive value, 
another value is negative okay then then there is only one triangle possible right so basically the number of a's that we get the number of positive values of a that we get from this equation that will decide how many triangle will be there okay so if i am getting two positive values of a that means two triangles are possible having the same b c and capital b correct but if i am getting two answers two real solutions out of which only one is positive and the other is negative or zero for that matter then only one triangle is possible okay and if i am getting let me write it down here also and if i am getting two negative values of a two negative values of a or non real values of a value of a or or non real values of a okay then in that case there is no triangle possible okay so in this case there will be no triangle possible so all depends upon all depends upon what are the roots that come out from this equation so if two positive roots come out well and good two two triangles would be there which will satisfy the same condition if one positive one negative is there that means only one triangle is there with that given particular b c and capital b and if both the roots are negative or both the roots are non real means no such triangle is possible with that given b and c so everything depends upon the nature of the roots that you get from this quadratic equation don't worry this quadratic equation you can easily solve it by using any of your methods known to you to solve quadratic equation normally we use our shridhar acharya formula factorization method whatever is known to you so once you solve it see what is your a values coming out so depending upon these three situations you can take a call so normally a question will come that you know how many triangles are possible which will have this given small b small c and capital b so like that for that type of questions you can basically form a quadratic in a and check what are the nature of the roots that you are getting okay but we are going to do a more deeper analysis of this so we are going to see what type of situations will arise and why those type of situations are actually arising we'll talk about that in much more depth so first note this down then okay let's do a small analysis since we were talking about the root of this equation playing a very vital role let's see let's see what all situations can arise by the way uh, i'm just assuming that i'm copying things correctly uh, i have a very short memory so you have um, yeah c square plus c square minus b square yeah plus c square minus b square okay so all of you please pay attention now if i talk about the discriminant of this quadratic equation let's 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 talk about the entire value of a okay let's not only talk about discriminant let's talk about the entire value of a itself so as per our shridhar acharya formula a value will be minus b please note that here b is negative 2c cos b so minus b will be 2c cos b okay plus minus under root b square minus 4ac so what is b square here it will be 4c square cos square b minus 4ac please note that a is actually i mean the a which i am talking about is that quadratics a coefficient of a x square so in that case it is a 1 whole divided by whole divided by 2a which in this case is 2 okay so let's do one thing let's simplify this i think two two factors can go off from everywhere because i can see a four right over here and there is a two also sitting over here 
So if I get rid of that extra two, I'll end up getting something like this. Okay, minus c square plus b square. By the way, this can be clubbed as this can be clubbed as c square times cos square b minus one, which is minus sine square. So I can write it like this. Okay. Any doubt? Any concerns so far related to this? So now we are going to see what all situations we will have two roots, what two triangles possible? What all situations will have only one triangle possible? What are the situations when we will have no triangle possible also? Okay. So everything will be hidden in this particular A expression. So it all depends on A, right? So if you want your A to be, you know, if you want your triangle to exist. It should give you a as positives, right? No negative values of a, no real values of a. So let's let's analyze that into more depth. So I'm now going to shift my screen to the right side. Hope you have copied this down. I'll copy it once again. Don't worry. So now the analysis starts. Analysis. So your a is c cos b plus minus under root. B square minus C square sine square B. Yes, this is what we had written. Okay. Yeah. B square minus C square sine square. B. Okay. Now three situations will arise over here. Number one situation. If your B C, remember these three are given to you. Okay. Don't forget this. These three things are given to you. Okay. If you realize that your B is such a value which is C times sine B. Okay. If you realize that your b is c sine uh, c times sine b means you realize that b square is c square sine square b, which means you realize that b square minus c sine square b is equal to zero. Then what will happen to a value? What will happen to a value? It will just reduce to c cos b. Correct. Agreed. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, now tell me how many triangles will be possible? How many triangles will be possible? Looking at this, what conclusion do you draw? Okay, Shardri says one triangle is possible. Anybody else? See, this is where I want you to think. So as per her, only one value of A will come out, right? For a given C, for a given capital B, you'll have only one value of A. But what Shardili will happen if that B was obtuse angle? Then no triangle will be possible, right? So here is a catch. Your answer was actually half, half, half correct. Okay. Here, if B is acute, see, if B is acute, then you definitely your A will be positive. Correct? So A will become positive. So only one positive A value will come out from there, and hence only one triangle will be possible. Okay? And that triangle will actually be a right angle triangle at C. Okay? So one triangle is possible. Okay, so let, let's check. Sorry, not right angle at C. It will be. Uh, uh, let, let me just show you. So one triangle is possible, and that triangle. Or uh, everybody, please note this down. A is equal to C sine B, right? Uh, sorry, A is equal to C cos B. Correct. Yes or no? Now, if B is acute. Only one triangle is possible, and that triangle, please understand here, is going to have. <clears throat> I'm just going to write it over here. Yeah. So A by. Let Let me make a diagram out of it. So let's say you have been provided with, you have been provided with B, you have been provided with a C, 
okay and you have been provided with an angle b okay now see everybody please pay attention so this is your let's say i'm i'm just making a complete triangle let me make a complete triangle okay a b c so question setter has provided you with a small b the question setter has provided with a small c and the question setter has provided you with this angle b okay now you are trying to find out your a location sorry uh, c location correct yes or no that means you are you are basically trying to find out your small a if your b happens to be if your b side happens to be c sin b now c sin b is actually a perpendicular correct yes or no so what are you doing here you are basically having this length equal to this length actually so this becomes your b are you getting my point so when your when your small b is equal to c sin b look here your your you know perpendicular from a on to bc becomes your small b that means this is the only location that you can have for your small c are you getting my point okay so that means the triangle is going to be a right angled at c make sense so that triangle is going to be a right angled at c right angled at c getting this point very very important now this can be proved very easily by using a sin law as well okay so we already know in sin law we already know in sin law that b by sin b is equal to c by sin c correct is equal to a by sin a yes or no ha will come to that obtuse part will come to that obtuse part that's why i made one branch out of it okay i have only made created one branch out of it okay now see here if you put your b as c sin b over here in this part of the equation you put your b as c sin b okay so it becomes something like this sin b sin b goes off small c small c also goes off so that gives us sin c as one value and if sin c is one there can be only one possible angle for that and that is 90 degree thereby reinforcing this fact that you will get a right angle at c yes or no but what if b becomes obtuse if b becomes obtuse you will end up getting a as a negative value because cos b is negative if b is obtuse and in such case no triangle is possible are you getting my point so no triangle is going to be possible in such a case in other words you are trying to say that this length b is actually a perpendicular drop from a to let's say bc okay and at the same time b is also obtuse it cannot happen right because there is already a right at right angle triangle at c and you are saying b is obtuse also how is it possible you cannot have a triangle with 190 degree and one obtuse angle inside it overall the total angle will exceed 180 degree right so that thing is taken care by the fact that you automatically get a as a negative value and because of that i mean we know that in a triangle we cannot have a negative side right so because of that we claim that there will be no triangle possible in such case is it fine okay so of course everything will be conveyed to you by that quadratic equation so you don't have to worry but this is something that if you want to do a faster analysis and you realize that oh my my b is equal to c sin b and b is obtuse immediately you write no triangle possible immediately you mark the option which says no triangle possible and move on okay so you don't have to even formulate that quadratic equation are you getting my point but again this comes with a catch that you need to remember these conditions and by the time you reach class 
that time i will ask you how many of you remember these conditions okay so many things we don't you know keep in our mind we are not able to keep in our mind for long long time okay and one of those things is basically these conditions so we are going to see much many more conditions here so the safe bet here is to form a quadratic solve for it and see how many roots are coming from there simple as that so this is those situation where you will end up getting one a value as positive right right and other other value will actually come out to be negative okay so in those cases you will have you know this kind of a conclusion draw so this is was your first situation when your b is equal to c sin b let's talk about second situation i will rewrite this uh, again in the next page don't worry about it so our a was c cos b plus minus under root b square minus c square sin square b correct okay so second situation is a situation where my b is greater than c sin b that means b square minus c square sin square b is positive okay that means this whole thing is this is actually a real quantity okay so and this is i mean basically you are trying to say that the discriminant here is discriminant here is positive i mean discriminant is greater than 0 okay so what happens in such case <clears throat> what happens in such case now all of you please pay attention everybody please pay attention in fact let's take one uh, before this we take this guy less than zero that will be easier for us to deal okay so let's complete this because third case will take some time i mean this case which i was discussing will take some time so i'll take this case first okay if this is negative that would that means what that means your a is going to be non real in nature right and if a is non real in nature there will be no triangle possible right so the moment you realize that your b happens to be lesser than c sin b immediately your conclusion is boss no such triangle is possible with that given b with that given small c and with that given angle b and even sin law will justify it so even sin law justifies it like see if you are saying b by sin b is equal to c by sin c okay now you are trying to say from here from here you are trying to say that b by sin b is lesser than c right so that means you are trying to say c by sin c is lesser than c that means you are trying to say sin c is greater than 1 how is this possible this is not possible in any in any angle sin c cannot be more than 1 right so this is basically coming from our sin law as well but i am getting the same from that quadratic expression also so i'm not saying that quadratic is a you know must thing to have to solve for that particular triangle you can make your judgments you can take your calls based on the other laws that you have learned so far so what is the conclusion here that if b happens to be c sin b immediately don't waste even you know quarter of a second and mark the fact that there is no triangle possible because of course the discriminant is negative a will be non real and second thing is that you will not get a you will not get a c which satisfies this condition okay now why does this happen you know people want to know from the geometrical point of view see geometrical point of view again i'll just make the okay so this is known to you b okay this is known to you c and this angle is known to you okay now this perpendicular length is actually b sin c are sorry c sin b sorry i just interchanged yeah now let's say this was not known to us okay this position was not known to us okay so what will you do let's say from a you are trying to you take a compass okay you take a compass you keep the you know needle of the compass over here and you fixed b length on that compass correct and you are trying to see where is that line and where is this line i mean the line which you have drawn here okay so let's say this line okay so if you want to locate your uh, if you want to find your small a you need to locate your small a capital c over here 
so for that you are keeping your compass over here and trying to make a cut on this right so you are basically keeping your compass at a fixing a length b on it okay and you are trying to see where it cuts but if this b happens to be lesser than c sin b what will happen you will not be even able to touch it this line that is let's say i call it as bx this line bx will not be even touched by that particular length so if you take a length which is even smaller than the perpendicular drawn from a on to bx you will not be able to touch this also forget about cutting it right it will not even touch it if it is not even touching it you will not be able to locate your capital c if you are not able to locate your capital c you will not get your small a over this is what has been mathematically explained by that particular quadratic expression so if somebody asks you that if this is happening then what exactly is geometrically happening that you are not getting any triangle so you will say that geometrically if i take if i put my compass at a take a length b on that compass it will not even it will not even touch this bx extended or b line extended this line extended okay so no triangle is possible is it fine so see i am showing you from various angles from quadratic perspective i am showing from sin law perspective i am showing from geometrical perspective also i am showing why is triangle is not possible got the point okay so we'll move on to the last case the last case is which uh, by mistake i started with but i immediately erase it off so the third case is where your i mean again i will write my a expression uh, i think it was c cos b plus minus under root b square minus c square sin square b right okay now your third case is where your b is greater than c sin b that means b square minus c square sin square b is positive that means of course discriminant is positive no nothing to worry okay by the way uh, i'll just call this quantity as a p okay and this quantity as a q for the time being so here you have ascertained that your this quantity which is your q okay of course it will be a positive quantity for sure okay so this guy will be a positive quantity okay so now all of you please tell me if q is positive okay i don't know about the nature of p right now how many values of a will be possible how many positive values of a will be possible now here in order to answer this we'll have to account for two more conditions when your b is acute okay and when your b is obtuse so let me write it over here when your b is obtuse okay all of you please pay attention so two further you know analysis we need to perform yes sir they very similar to what you are saying we'll discuss it about so if b is acute it means your q uh, p value which happens to be c cos b this will also be positive okay now both are positive p is also positive q is also positive okay so you'll say sir if both are positive then definitely with a plus sign i will have a triangle or i will have a a value correct so this will also be positive so this is one triangle possible correct one triangle we got from here but what if i take a negative sign in between c cos b with a negative sign what will happen to a in this case if i take a negative sign what will happen to a in this case now please note this is also positive this is also positive but you are subtracting it does it mean that a always will be negative or a will be positive or it could be either of the two it could be either of the two right shardri now see here very very important if your if your magnitude of c cos b exceeds the magnitude of this fellow then what will happen 
then in that case a will come out to be positive and another triangle will be po possible over here are you getting my point see here are two positive quantities this is your p and this is your q you are subtracting it correct so when you are subtracting two positive quantities you can get a positive answer also right but for that to happen this p should have a higher magnitude no as compared to q isn't it so for that to happen this guy should be having a magnitude more than the other guy correct which means let me further simplify this condition that means c square cos square b should be greater than b square minus c square sin square b let's take this on the other side that means c square cos square b plus sin square b should be greater than b square which means c square is greater than b square correct which means c should be more than b correct now here is the final conclusion so what is the conclusion that i am drawing from here that if b is acute if b is acute and c is more than b then you will have two triangles possible isn't it but if your c happens to be lesser than b only one triangle will be possible now why two triangle because you take a plus or a minus between let's say here there was a plus minus no so both plus and minus is going to give you a positive value of it so two triangles can exist right so in such a case the quadratic that you will solve will give you two positive a values plain and simple it's just that i'm doing a further deeper analysis on it right so if a is acute Oh, sorry b is acute and c is greater than b two triangles will be possible but if c is lesser than b then remember only with a plus sign you can get that means only this triangle will be possible with a minus sign you will not get a triangle are you getting my point let me not put right or wrong next to it okay is this clear or not now geometrically speaking why it is happening why am i getting two triangles here why i'm getting only one triangle here can geometrically we understand it okay now see the idea is the same the idea is the same this was let's say this was your side length c okay c was given to you this angle was given to you now what you did on a compass on a compass you took you took b length okay and now see here if your b is more than c if your b is more than c then what will happen when you run that arc when you run that arc that arc will cut something like this it will cut on this side also yes or no see from here you put a compass let's say look at my hand my little finger you are putting on that a and my thumb is where you are going to cut your b extended let's say i call it as b extended okay line so if your small b is more than c it is going to cut here let's say this position let's say c1 and this position let's say c2 correct yes or no yes or no now if you are cutting it at c2 can i say this can be my triangle you will say no sir because in that case b becomes obtuse this will become your b no not this one right that is why when b is more than c only one triangle is possible and that triangle will be the one which you will obtain by connecting a with c1 this will be your required triangle not the other one this one will not be your triangle are you getting my point or not understood but if your b is lesser than c please note my dear students if your b is lesser than c this is your situation number this guy okay now for the situation where your b is lesser than c let me again make the diagram okay this was your a this was your b okay and now you are taking an arc and that arc is going to only cut on one side of this that means it is going to cut like this so again put a compass at a 
okay and it's going to cut like this it is not going to exceed here see please understand b is less than c right so it cannot come on this side of c so if if it comes on this side then this length will become more than b no but my b is lesser than c so it cannot come on the left side of b are you getting my point so it is only going to make an arc on the very same side of b dono c1 c2 will be on the right side of b are you getting my point so with this you can frame two triangles one with this and another is this let me make a different color here so one is like what you see on your screen and one other is with the blue line so this triangle is possible a b c or this triangle is possible a b c are you getting my point here so this could be your small b or this could be your small b okay so this could be your a this could be your a that depends upon the okay is this fine so this is your second situation when your b is lesser than lesser than c is it fine any questions uh, let me do one thing let me put a uh, figure number to this let's say this is figure number 2 this is figure number 1 so that when you are referring your note you can see those figures so this is basically c figure c figure number 2 okay and this is your c figure number 1 right so when you are reading your notes you can understand why one triangle was possible and here why two triangle is possible right now this is not the end of the story we have further more an analysis to make now let us talk about b is obtuse this is something which we have not covered yet okay so let us talk about that also let me write it yeah let me make a fresh diagram on the next page maybe that would be more fruitful so this is part a no not this is part a sorry this is part a part a is where your b is acute Okay, part B, where B is obtuse. Let's see what happens in that case. So for that, I'll go to the next slide. So if you have any questions in this slide, please do let me know. Any questions? Any concerns? So any dates that you have received for KVPY? Uh, I mean, I did not check the website lately, but have they announced any dates? The new dates? No, not yet. okay so now here we'll take a situation where b is obtuse okay uh, by the way i'll just rewrite the a again uh, for you all to refer to so a was c cos b plus minus under root b square minus c square sin square b okay so here we have already assumed that b is more than c sin b okay so here please understand if b is obtuse then this guy which is p and this guy which is q okay so p is by the way this is what i named it in the previous slide also or did i named it the other way around i want to be consistent in naming actually what did i name it ha p and q p and q yeah correct i keep forgetting what i gave as the name of the two expressions yeah so this is p this is q so q is definitely positive so because of this q is definitely positive right it, it exists and it is positive okay so q is positive now what will happen your p which is your c cos b will become negative now because of the fact that b is obtuse okay so now when you're talking about a triangle you cannot get a triangle if there is a negative sign taken over here so if you take the negative sign okay like this there cannot be any triangle form because this is anyways negative and you are subtracting a positive quantity from it so overall this will be negative so no triangle will be possible in such scenario so no triangle possible okay so if c is greater than sorry if b is greater than c sin b and you realize that b is obtuse no triangle possible straight away you drop the matter there right but but with a positive sign what can happen with a positive sign what can happen right let us check 
if i take a positive sign that is c cos b plus under root b square minus c square sin square b now understand here this guy is in inherently negative quantity okay and this guy is positive quantity and you are adding it so you can get positive answer also from there you can get negative answer also from there depending upon whose magnitude is more right so if if the magnitude of c cos b is lesser than the magnitude of b square minus c square cos sin square b under root then what will happen the positive quantity will dominate the negative quantity means overall it will make things positive isn't it because this is more powerful than this guy so even though this is negative overall on adding it will become a positive quantity right by the way this is something that we have already solved i mean in our previous slide also but still i will do it again that means if your i'm just rewriting it completely that means if your c square is less than b square that means if your c is less than b then what will happen in this case one triangle will be possible okay but on the other hand if your c is more than b then again no triangle is possible no triangle is possible so let us try to see this condition let us try to see this condition see here i mean i'm just summarizing it so the conclusion here that we are drawing is that if b is obtuse if b is obtuse and your c happens to be lesser than b then only one triangle is possible okay and that triangle is possible when you are taking a positive sign right but if your c is more than b then no triangle will exist are you getting my point here okay so now this one triangle that is possible is the one which we had ignored in our previous diagram okay so let's again make the same scenario so let's say this is my let me make it in white color yeah so let's say this is a okay this is b and let's say i extend this okay i don't know where is my c because you know that information is to be figured out from here so this angle is known to you this is known to you and you have you have basically given that c is less than b or b is more than c so if b is more than c please realize that if you keep your compass at a and try to locate your c it will be cutting this line at two points one is at this position c1 other is at this position c2 right so which of the two will have which will, which of the two will give you the case where b is obtuse and b small b is more than c this guy is going to meet that criteria so this is the only triangle possible are you getting my point this is not going to work out okay so this will be your b isn't it yes or no is it fine are you getting my point so this is the triangle and this triangle is not going to be possible okay clear right that's another uh, valid point that's another valid point uh, sharbili okay so if if c is greater than b please note that in those cases what will happen your entire triangle will be formed with the side on the right side that means it will be something like this i'm just making a quick diagram it's just give me a second yeah 
So what is going to happen in this case? When you are taking a compass and you are trying to cut, and if your if your B is smaller than C, it is going to cut this side only, right? C one, C two, and none of them is going to work out. You can't have a triangle like this, why? Right? Because if you have a triangle like this, your B is not obtuse. It is acute in this case. This is not obtuse in that case, right? So this triangle is not possible. If you try to make a triangle with this C one, this also is not possible. Is it fine? Any questions? So that is why no triangle is possible for such scenario, right? And Shardul is right. If B is obtuse, it is supposed to be the greatest angle. That means. Sorry, if B is obtuse, it is supposed to be the greatest angle. That means B is greatest than any other side. So how can B be smaller than C? So this is not possible. That means the entire scenario is faulty. No triangle is going to exist like this. Okay. So these are the analysis that you need to keep in mind while you are solving questions. So now let's see what type of questions are going to be asked. Okay, let's take that. Where is my question bank? Yeah. Okay. Let's start with this question. Find the number of triangles that can be constructed. With the given information that your small b is three, small c is four, and angle b is pi by three, please solve it and let me know your response in the chat box. Yes, done. See, which is this case? You have been provided with this length, this length, and this angle. Okay, so two sides and a non-included angle is there. So this is actually a ambiguous case, right? So we have we are basically looking into an ambiguous case, right? So again, don't panic. Don't panic if you have forgotten those conditions. those conditions have all come from the fact that you are supposed to get a quadratic equation from it let's say this is your a right so you end up getting cos 60 degree as a square plus 4 square minus 3 square by 2 into a into 4 in other words half is equal to a square this is going to be 7 by 8a 
Okay, so let's solve it. So uh, a square plus seven is equal to four a. Correct. So a square minus four a plus seven is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular case, you would realize that your discriminant, that is your b square minus four ac, is negative. Correct. That means your a is going to be non-real. Right. So whether you take plus minus doesn't matter. A itself is going to be a non-real. So how many triangles are possible? No triangle is possible. Zero triangle is possible. No triangle is possible with such given scenario, right? And you would realize that, okay? You would realize that even if you use those conditions, right? That condition is going to be basically fulfilled. Is it fine? Any questions here? Anything that I missed out, please feel free to highlight. Good enough. Okay. Let's take another one. Yes, any success? Now here also what has been given to you is these two and a non-included angle. So this is again a case of ambiguous case. So two sides and a non-included angle. Okay, again, start from basics. No need to see your small c is your unknown, right? So, first write cos of a. Okay, so what is cos of a? Acha, uh, okay, let, let's, let's solve for it. So, cos of 60 degree. Cos of 60 degree will be what? Sorry, cos of 30 degree will be what? c square plus 8 square minus 7 square by 2 into c into 8. Yes or no? Correct. Yes, let's solve for it. So this is going to be root three by two. And I think this is going to be uh, 64 minus 49, which is 15. Uh, and this will be two into eight C. So two, two goes off. So you have C square 
माइनस एट रूट थ्री सी प्लस फिफ्टीन इक्वल टू जीरो राइट ना यू कैन सॉल्व फॉर इफ यू सॉल्व फॉर योर सी वैल्यूज लेट्स चेक व्हाट हैपेंस Now see the presence of a real root is not important. The presence of real and positive root is important. You can't have real and negative values of a side, right? A side cannot be negative in a triangle, right? So when you solve by using your Shridhar Acharya formula, you get uh, b uh, minus b plus minus b square. B square will be one ninety two minus four ac will be sixty divided by two a. So that's going to give you eight root three plus minus. By the way, this is one one two by two. Not one one two one thirty two, one thirty two by two. Now please understand here that even if you take a plus, you'll get a you'll get a positive value of c. Even if you take a negative, also you'll get a positive value of c. Right? That means both plus and minus are acceptable. So this is also possible, and this is also possible. Right? So two values of C are possible, and hence two triangles are possible. So option. So here the answer is two triangles. Is it fine? Any questions? So what I wanted to convey here is that it is not necessary that you remember all those conditions that we discussed. Okay, you can just make use of your quadratic itself to get your required result. Let's take this one. so this is a case where a is given to you b is given to you and the included angle is given to you find the other two angles All right. Any success? Oh, sure. Take your time. Thirty seconds is okay.
Okay, Prisham. Okay, so many of you would have actually a very good shout out Many of you would have actually used your cosine law. How many of you use cosine law here? Just say me on the chat box. Okay, some of you, some of you used. For a change, I will not solve this by cosine law. I will solve it by using my tangent law. Okay. Why? Because A, B is given to me and a included angle is given to me. So I can use this formula tan a minus b by 2 is a minus b by a plus b cot c by 2. Okay. So let's write this as it is. And a minus b will give you, correct me if I'm wrong, root 3 minus 1 and root 3 plus 3, which is actually root 3 plus 1. Correct. Cot c by 2. Cot c by 2 is cot 30 degree. Cot 30 degree is root 3. This will be one my my bad yeah so if you cancel this off you get something like root three minus one by root three plus one now all of you please pay attention if you express it like this okay this actually becomes tan 45 minus tan 30 by one plus tan 45 tan 30 which is clearly a compound angle identity for tan of 45 minus 30. Okay. And this is clearly 15 degree. Correct. So basically you're trying to say, basically you're trying to say a minus B by two is 15 degree, which means a minus B is 30 degrees and a plus B is already 120 degree. The reason being C is known to you as 60. So a plus B is 120. So if you add them, 2A is 150, that means A will be 75 and B will be 45. There you go. So A and B are found out straight away. Okay. Now what I'll do in order to find my sine C, I will use my, sorry, in order to find my small C, not sine C, small C, I will use my sine law. Correct. So can I say B by sine B will be small C by sine C. So B B is given to you as 2. Okay. Sine B is 1 by root 2. Small c is not known to you. And sine c, sine c will be sine of 60 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 by 2. Okay. Let's try to solve it. So this is going to be, uh, uh, let's, let's take it on the other side. So this is going to be 2 into root 3 by 2 into root 2. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. 2, 2 goes off. So your answer is going to be root 6. So small c is going to be root 6. So I think, I think, uh, Prishim, your c value was not right. Sharduli. Yes, I think you didn't find your small a, uh, capital A, by the way. But yes, your b is correct from that equation and c is also correct. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns anybody has? Okay. So we are going to stop this topic over here itself. And we are now going to start with a new topic.